Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Holly and today I am excited to share with you how I made these mini charcuterie boards and designed them with a pinky sort of beach wave design that you could use for a kitchen decor or you could use them for serving. And they turned out really pretty, really sparkly, super cute, and I think you're gonna like this. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I found these super cute round mini charcuterie boards at Hobby Lobby. Um, I got these during their fall sale a couple weeks ago where they were having a 50% off. So I got these for three ninety or half of $3.99. These measure six and a half inches by four and a half inches and they're about three tenths inch thick. So very small. So these would be perfect for like an appetizer to serve, you know, for a Thanksgiving meal or hors d'oeuvre or, you know, maybe you could slap a little escargot on there. <laughs> If, if you are into to snails, I think they're good. <laughs> Don't judge. Um, but I didn't want to do like a fall theme on these because I've been doing fall tumblers. Um, I kind of gravitate toward the fall colors. And so I wanted to kind of drift away from that a little bit. And I decided to make a beach theme. I've already done a beach tumbler and notebook on my YouTube channel with just the traditional um, beachy colors with the sand and the blue skies. So this time I decided to do sort of a pastel pinky sort of beach theme. So I'm using some lighter shades, the same sort of technique, but lighter shades. And I am going to begin by sanding my charcuterie boards and then spritzing them with rubbing alcohol to get rid of that dust residue. Then I'm gonna tape up the bottom of them um, just like I did on my last video where I made the um, the coasters. <laughs> Couldn't think of what those were called. The little coasters that I made on the last video. I'm going to tape the bottom of these up exactly the same way and then use a very sharp craft knife to cut around the edges of the boards um, to, to make sure I have a nice clean cut on the backside. So when I peel that tape off, the excess epoxy that drips over the edge should come off with it. If not, I'm gonna have to sand them down. But this is how I'm beginning. I also wanted to make sure that I put a little cut where that hole is, um, where I removed the little string because I'm gonna replace that string when I'm all done with it. And I wanna make sure that the epoxy drips through the hole and coats the sides of that um, to make sure that everything is nice and sealed. I am going to need space for my epoxy to drip over and fall off the edge. So I'm elevating these boards on two little cups and that's where they're gonna stay until I am done applying all my epoxy. So now I'm just preparing for all my epoxy cups. So in one cup, there's gonna be epoxy with a mixture of abalone shells. So that's what I just had in my hand. In another one, I'm gonna have some browns. So this is champagne and halo. The halo um, additive is from PDB Creative Studios and then the champagne glitter is from Glitter Heart Co. So I'm mixing that up. You couldn't really see the halo very well in there so I'm also going to do another separate cup with just halo then I'm doing Jack Frost and Beach Bum Jack Frost is from the glitter guy and Beach Bum is from glitter heart co and then I'm putting three glitters from glitter heart co in one cup and those glitters are sweetheart oh I forgot let's see what those are those are romance beautiful babe beautiful babe is a chunky glitter and sweetheart and then in the very last cup, I'm putting Froze All Day from PDB Creative Studio and then another Glitter Heart Co. Rose Water, which is also chunky. So I have two pinks, a blue, and a beige. Then I'm going to have the cup that has the abalone shells and I'm also going to have another cup that just has the halo in it. So I'm mixing those up. I've mixed parts A and B epoxy. So I did 20 mLs part A. It's a fascinating epoxy, it's called Liquidy Split. It cures very, very quickly, so I have to move fast when I'm using these. Um, would I recommend using fast setting epoxy? No, <laughs> unless you have a planning, you know exactly how you're gonna lay it out. And I knew that I could work pretty quickly, so I went ahead and chanced using the fast setting epoxy. So I'm gonna have, um, 
just enough epoxy in these cups so that the glitter mixes and pours well, but it's not too liquidy and not too thick. So I want it to pour and spread out, but I don't want it to spread out too far. So I'm just eyeballing the consistency of it, and then I'm gonna start layering those on. So I'm gonna start with the champagne layer first. Right on top, or right above the champagne layer, I'm gonna have the blue. Right on top of the blue, I'm gonna have the light pink, and then the darker shade of pink right up on top. So I'm gonna layer those quickly, and I'm gonna speed up this video just a touch. To avoid this video being 45 minutes long or more, I'm just going to show a couple. I'm gonna do one color on two each of these boards and then skip through the rest of it so it doesn't take forever. But I'm just doing the same thing with every board. So here's the beige or the tan mixture and then I'm gonna layer right on top of that the blue for each one. So I'm just kind of I'm putting it on there so that it touches the previous color and then I want to make sure that it drips down over the side So I want it to run off. I want it to fall over the side and run off It's okay if it thins out as it runs over the side But I want to make sure that all the surface is covered from left to right and now I'm going to layer with the pink and continue all the way through the boards as I move up to the top with that last pink mixture, I wanna make sure I sort of blob that right on the whole area because I want the glitter to run through and touch both sides of the inside of that hole. And so I'm giving it a shake to make sure it falls over. So now I'm going through with the abalone mixture. So this is just clear epoxy with those abalone shells. And I'm gonna put that on there. And unfortunately, some of those got covered up when I put the waves on, but they still look pretty cool. The final step before I start pushing those glitters around with my heat gun is to outline that bottom color of champagne beige with a mixture of halo and just plain epoxy. So this halo pulls yellow, beigey, and white um, glimmers. It is the prettiest additive I think I've ever seen. It is gorgeous and looks beautiful on these beachy tumblers. So now I'm using my heat gun. I started on low to just heat up a little bit and just push it around and then I just hit it on high and just continued on high until those glitters were kind of blended in with one another. And then I just took a paper towel with some al rubbing alcohol on it and just wiped up any drips that fell. So this is foam white from uh, Mermaid Trash. I've had this for quite a while. I use it all the time. It is the perfect wave white. So if you wanna make beachy waves and make it look like they're foamy, this is the perfect um, substance to use. So you just mix it in with your epoxy. So what I do first is I, I added a layer that was too thick. I didn't mean to go that thick, but there we have it. So I added an overly thick layer of just straight epoxy. Then I'm going to pop the bubbles in that epoxy with my torch and then slightly above the clear layer of epoxy, kind of in the middle of it, I guess, I'm gonna put a very thin layer of the Mermaid Trash foam white mixed in with the epoxy and then I'm going to blow that out with my heat gun to start forming the waves. Now what you're not going to see because I got a phone call and then my uh, phone quit recording is I did a second layer over the top. So this first layer is gonna go toward the bottom and then I'm gonna blow it out with my heat gun and then immediately after I do that, I do another very small layer up above it about an inch or so and then I blow that out. But I did not catch that um, on my phone uh, and I apologize for that. But that's what I did. I just did two layers of this white and then blew it out with my heat gun moving the white up and kind of to the side a little bit to make it look like the waves are moving, um, sort of rushing, I guess. 
So here you can see that second layer of white that I did above the first one. So what a mess, right? <laughs> so now what I'm doing is I'm taking some liquid latex and I'm just going to outline along the bottom edge of where that white foam epoxy stops because now I need to add just a clear layer of epoxy, but I don't want the clear layer of epoxy to run too far down below where that epoxy sits right now. So I'm just putting a fairly thick layer, butting it right up next to where the epoxy stops. And then I'm going to dry that just a little bit. I'm gonna let it sit naturally, but it took a really long time to dry. And then I'm gonna use my heat gun to try to speed up the, the drying process on this liquid latex. Then after I apply the clear layer of epoxy, I'm just gonna peel that latex right off. And guess what? I don't show that either because I took my phone off of my tripod to set my timer for four minutes, four minutes to mix my epoxy. And then I was in a hurry to use it because it's fascinating <laughs> epoxy. And then I forgot to put my phone back up on the tripod. So, <clears throat> yep. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to explain what I did. So after that um, latex dried, I poured the epoxy on and I used a gloved hand to rub it all over the surface, all around the edge, and I let it drip down. And then I just let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I just peeled the latex off and it peeled off like, um, you know, like when your skin is peeling, basically it just pulled right off. Then I took a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and then I just cleaned off the areas where the epoxy may have splattered over the latex section. So now they have been sitting and curing and this is what they look like before you sand down the wood and apply your oil. I let these totally cure overnight and then I went and peeled off the tape and popped off those little bubbles of epoxy. I did have to use a drill bit to sand through the center of those holes because the epoxy built up underneath it. It didn't fall all the way through like I wanted it to. So after I peel off the tape and poke off all that epoxy, I just took them upstairs and I drilled right through the center there. And now I'm going to use an orbital sander to sand the back of these really smooth and then also sand portions of the front, trying not to get too close to the epoxy on the decorative side. Then I'm just going to take a 60 grit sanding block and just try to soften up those edges a little bit. Um, when I was using my uh, handheld sander, I kind of clipped the, corn, the uh, edge on a couple of these. So I'm just cleaning it up, making sure it's nice and smooth so it doesn't snag on anything. And then I'm going to give it a spritz with rubbing alcohol, each one of them. And then I got this a new oil that is, has a little sponge applicator on it and you just dab it onto the wood block and then you rub it in. So we'll see how that works. I found this on Amazon. It came in a pack of two. It's called Bamboogle and it's just an oil for your blocks, food safe, and you just dab it and then rub it in. So um, maybe I, I don't know if I was supposed to let it sit for a really long time, but I just rubbed it in and then I let it sit for a little bit and then I did a second application and then I just took a paper towel and wiped off the excess because it kind of seemed like maybe it was a little too much oil that I put on there. It was just kind of sitting right on top. The first application sunk right in and absorbed into the wood. The second application, not so much. It just kind of sat for a little bit. So I'm sure you don't need a whole lot of oil. So I continued with all of these, the backs, and then flipped them over to the front. And then you can see that top left one with my orbital sander. I kind of ha held it at an angle a little bit and it kind of left an indentation. So I need some practice using that sander. I am a newbie. To finish these up, I really wanted a tag hanging from it. Um, not the tag that I, that it came with it when I bought it, but like a cutesy tag. And I didn't want it to be Thanksgiving related because I don't know who I give these to, if they're going to use them just for Thanksgiving or if they want to use them year round or whatever. So I wanted it sort of a generic tag, but I wanted it to be kind of funny or maybe family related or I don't know. I just wanted it to be cute. So I was thinking, well, most likely I'll probably give these to one of my girls 
and all my girls have kids and they're picky eaters. So I found this one that says you will eat it and you will like it and I thought that is could not be more perfect. Now I've done uh, several videos before on how I use Cricut to make tags and cut uh, paper out and slice and flatten and all that kind of thing. So really quick, I'm just gonna tell you what I did is I put a solid rectangle behind my image and then I put a little dot there that I'm gonna slice out because that's where I want the string to go through. And then I'm gonna put another rectangle behind it for layers. So the big rectangle that's gonna go behind it is gonna be cut out of construction paper or um, scrapbook paper. And then this is gonna be cut out of a sticker that's gonna stick over the top of the scrapbook paper. And I just changed the color of the background to white and changed the ink to blue and then flattened it and sent it to my printer to print and cut. And then the back side of it is just going to be a cut file. So once that cuts, then I will layer everything together and start tying it with a string to each of my charcuterie boards. Now that everything is cut, I can start piecing it together. So here's my rectangle that was in the back, and this is the sticker that I changed the color of the ink. On my print and cut, I used Cricut sticker paper for the sticker piece, and then just some plain old extra scrapbook paper that I've had sitting around my craft room for years and years and years, and the colors matched fairly well, so I thought that would be perfect to use to stick the sticker paper on. So then I'm going to attach each of these with string to each of the boards. And that is it. It's a fairly simple project. There's a lot of steps to it, but it's not a difficult one to do. Um, I made these in a day, a little over a day with the epoxy curing, and they turned out really cute. So I'm glad I experimented. Now I need to do a big board. Um, I hope you love this video or in this idea as much as I do. Please leave any questions or comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.